Here's another bead pattern design for the win. It's a bowling ball and a bowling pin. The bead bowling pin and ball pattern is a perfect strike. It's a simple design that's easy to make. I know that you'll like. With its recognizable look that you can see with a glance or glare, a bead pattern that you can create with little time to spare. So let's get ready for a tutorial to satisfy your creative needs. Feel free to give this video a like and enjoy this episode of Turbo Beats. Here's a list of everything you need to make the bowling pin and ball. Before starting this project, I'm just letting you know that I'm using Eskety Strings made by Preple Braiding Company. It's a round plastic lace that has a bit of flexibility to it and it works great. With that being said, I'm just keeping you informed and just letting you know that this is a personal choice. This is not a sponsored video. Making the bowling pin and ball pattern is pretty simple. We'll start out by using the straw technique. What we're going to do is take a straw and split it down the center by cutting it with scissors. So just watch close as I carefully cut the straw down the center. Splitting the straw down the center will make it easier to add beads to that straw. Basically what we're doing is we're using the straw as a stabilizer for the rows of beads to keep them straight, aligned, and in place. Now that we have that straw split down the center, we're going to add two white beads to that straw, just like this. Once you have those beads on the straw, you're going to carefully cut off the end of that straw, keeping that straw from showing through the sides. As you can see, this row of beads maintains its shape with the straw hidden inside. With this stabilized row of beads, we're now ready to add them to the string. From here, we're going to take 5 feet of string. Then, we can add those beads to that string. Continue watching as I add the stabilized row of beads to the string. Once you have those beads on the string, we're going to push those beads toward the center of that string. To ensure that you have those beads in the center, what you'll do is you'll take both ends of string, matching them up, pushing those beads toward the center. This will ensure that those beads are in the center of the string and having the same amount of string to use on each side for making rows. This is the first row of the pattern. As a quick tip, you can always use tape to keep those beads pinned down, that way you can ensure that these beads stay in the center of that string. This will also make it easier to assemble this project. As you can see, we're ready for the next row. Creating the next row is just as simple. Again, we're going to use that straw technique, and we're going to add four white beads to that straw that's been split down the center. Again, the straw has been used as a stabilizer. Once you have those beads on that straw, you're going to cut off the end of that straw, keeping it from showing through the sides. Now that we have the stabilized row of beads, we're going to take one end of the string and we're going to add those beads to that string. Watch close as I add the beads to the string. Once you have those beads on the string, you're going to take your other end of string and you're going to run it through all of those beads as well, going in the opposite direction. Once you get that string through both ends of those beads, you'll pull both ends of the string evenly until you've reached the top, bringing all of those beads together. As you can see, we've just created the second row, which was pretty simple. Creating any more additional rows will be just as easy. What we'll do, again, you'll use that straw technique. You'll add your beads to that straw. As you can see, I'm adding four white beads to that straw. Now that we have those beads on the straw, again, you'll cut off the end of the straw, keeping it from showing through the sides, keeping that straw hidden within those beads. Then, you'll take one end of the string and add that stabilized row of beads to that string. Then you'll take your other end of string and you're going to run it through all of those beads as well, going in the opposite direction. Once you get that string through both ends of those beads, you'll pull both ends of the string evenly until you've reached the top, bringing all of those beads together. From here, you'll continue repeating the same steps when creating additional rows. Again, you'll take your stabilized row of beads and you're going to add those beads to that string. Once you have those beads on the string, you'll take your other end of string and run it through all of those beads as well, going in the opposite direction. 
Now that you have both ends of the string through those beads, you'll pull both ends of the string evenly until you've reached the top, bringing all of those beads together. So just continue repeating these steps, creating additional rows, following the pattern as seen at the top of the screen. So far, from what you can see, we have the top of the bowling pin and these two rows of three red beads that create the stripe of the image of the bowling pin. As a quick tip when creating rows, be sure to take your time ensuring you have the correct amount of beads for the rows as shown at the top of the screen. That way, your pattern turns out as it should. Also, be sure to pull both ends of the string evenly on both sides, pulling the string just enough to keep those beads in a tight formation. Once you finish the ninth row, we're going to mix it up and do something a little bit different. We're going to add an extension to this row. So what you'll do is you'll take one end of the string, which will be the string on the right. Then you're going to add two black beads to that string. Once you have those beads on the string, you're going to run those beads to the top. Now that we have those two beads on the end of that ninth row, we'll merge them together by using a toothpick. We'll run that toothpick through all of the beads that make up the ninth row. So watch close as I guide the toothpick through these beads. Let me be sure to mention, be very careful when guiding that pick through these beads, ensuring you don't get poked by the sharp points. But once you have that toothpick through those beads, you'll break off the end of that pick, keeping it from showing through the sides. As you can see, we've just merged this row of beads. This is exactly what it should look like. From here, we'll go back to using the same steps, using both ends of the string again to create additional rows for this pattern. As I've mentioned before, be sure to take your time ensuring that you have the correct amount of beads for each row as shown at the top of the screen so that the pattern turns out as it should. Also, be sure to pull both ends of the string evenly on both sides, pulling that string just enough, keeping those beads in a tight formation. From here, you'll start to see the image of the bowling pin and ball a bit more clear. With this one, I've used white and red for the pin and black beads to represent the bowling ball with clear beads for the holes within that ball. I think these are a great combination of colors that go well for this pattern. Of course, you're always free to use whichever colors you want for this pattern. Leave a comment below and let me know what cool color combinations you choose to use for your project. Once you finish the 15th and final row, you'll tie off each end of strings with a knot to lock all of those beads into place. As you can see here, tying the string in a knot is as easy as it seems. Be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure to ensure that everything stays locked into place and holds together. With the first knot tied, we'll tie off the other end as well, ensuring that these beads stay locked into place. Again, as you can see, tying the string in the knot is as easy as it seems. Now that your string is tied and all of those beads are locked into place, you'll carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string and your bowling pin and ball are now complete. And there you have it, a fantastic bead design that looks fine that was fun to make. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful and you can create one just as great. If there's anything you would like to add, requests or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you are new or you just haven't already, don't forget that you can always subscribe if you want to be notified for more bead tutorials just like this one. Hoping you'll tune in for the next one to satisfy your creative needs. Until next time, as always, thanks for watching Turbo Beads.